and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. A lot of Christians stop growing in knowledge and understanding because they think they understand everything that's in this book now. I've been a Christian for 30 years. I've read that Bible six times. I understand it all. I don't need to be taught anymore. No, no. no. It unlocks at different levels of maturity. You go back and read it and say, wow, I didn't really understand that's what it was talking about. Right. As you grow. Yep. Yep. Nobody, there's Christians, they think they arrived. Right. And, live, and live so ungodly out there. And it's like, wait a minute, how can you arrive? You're, yeah, you arrive, you're, you're walking with the devil. <laughs> but you're saying, well, I know the scripture. Yeah, so does the devil. He knows it inside and out. As a matter of fact, he used it to, talk, to go against Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could use the scripture to go against Jesus too. It's not my righteousness, it's God's. Well, so I can live whatever way I want. Really, you took it right out of context. That's what you did, so you could live a sinful life. And still go to heaven, all this in heaven too. The devil said, yeah, that's, those are my kids. Because it says in scripture something totally different. Now look what it says. For I want you to understand what really matters, so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. What is it talking about, pure and blameless lives, until Jesus comes back? That's what, uh, that's what growing in knowledge and understanding produces. Yep. You see it? Look. What will knowledge and understanding produce? So you may live what? Pure and blameless lives. My knowledge and understanding leads me into a righteous living pattern. Without that, you have no knowledge and no understanding. You've got to be taught all over again. You've got to be fed all again to all the counsels of God again. Because you, you totally miss the mark as a Christian. So it's hard to unlearn what you think you already know. Because, oh, I already know that. I'm, it's not my righteousness. I know it ain't mine. No kidding, that's why Jesus died, so you could have his. Right. Christianity is so messed up yeah. because of it. Yeah. You got one side of Christianity, you got to do this, do that, wear this and wear that, and God accepts you. And then you got the other Christians, hey, come with me, man, don't worry about it, there's nothing you can do. It's God's righteousness. Come on, let's go to the track and let's go gamble. Come on, I got, I got, 20, I got 20 on him. Hello? That's why he saved you? Lies from the devil. Lies. Right. All lies. Right. And believers go either way with it instead of staying right in the middle. I need to live a disciplined, blameless life so I can walk with God here. Because I don't care how, how your relationship with God gets broken, your fellowship with God gets broken when you live in continuous patterns of sin. It, yes. it start, our antennas start to walk, fade. Yep. You don't lose your relationship with them. You lose your fellowship with them. Yep. Because he said, I can't get dwelling with you. You're living a sinful life knowing that I don't want you to live like that. You know it. And you want me to walk with you. No, I said, I'm going to work against you until you come back. Amen. So you're going to be miserable. How many miserable Christians have I to tell already? Could it be of yours? It could be the way you're living and the way you're thinking, or it could be God testing you, bringing you to another level. Either way, it's God's in control of it. But are you evaluating your life? Are you looking at what's wrong with everybody else's and saying, is it me? Amen? Amen? Now look what it says, though. Wait a minute now. Until the day Christ returns, now until Jesus comes home, he wants us to grow in knowledge and understanding. Okay? So that means we never stop growing in knowledge and understanding. Amen. He says, unless you become like a child, yep. you ain't going to see it here. I'm intelligent here. I think I'm a very intelligent person. God said in the Bible, you've got to become a fool then. If you want to get to know me. Amen. <laughs> and people with a lot of knowledge and think they're really smart have a hard time dealing with that. So I mean, i gotta I got to become foolish? It's hard to get unlearned. It's hard to put all that intelligence aside and become like a child again. It's very hard to lay that down. 
It's called pride. Quiet in here, right? <clears throat> oh, I'm, I'm a smart person. In whose eyes are you smart? Are you smart in the world's eyes? Because you're able to do this and do that? Well, God gives us a lot of abilities, but they're to glorify Him, not you. Amen. That's the problem. Right. Yeah. Now look what it says. May your, you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation. You mean my salvation <clears throat> should produce some kind of fruit? What's that kind of fruit? What is it producing in my life? Look what it says. The righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. There's where your salvation comes in, okay? You don't do the right thing to get saved. You do the right thing because you, you are saved and you have Jesus living in you. Amen. And he's prompting you to live right. Yes. Will he ever stop working on us? No. No. Thank God, right? Thank you, Jesus. And we have different seasons of our life where we're walking with him faithfully. And then there's other seasons in our lives where he's refining and he's yep. doing some work in us and he's back in there again. And he's, Amen. he's scrambling all up again. Getting us out of our comfort zone. We don't want his Christians too comfortable. Yep. So he'll cause a little bit of a whirlwind in your life. Yep. Well, I don't know why this is happening to me. I'm studying my Bible. I'm doing the right thing every time. And I'm walking with the Lord the best I can. Why is this happening to me? Well, if that's the case, that's because he's what? He's refining you even more. He's pruning more of you Amen. to get you more like him. Mm -hmm. So it's never going to stop happening. If you can make peace with that, you're going to have peace all the time. <laughs> all right, God, what are you doing today? <laughs> Go easy on me. <laughs> I just opened my eyes and I, I don't know. It's going to be rough. I can tell already. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? You know the snowball effect of life, right? You start off by not being able to find a shoe. By the end of the day, you hate everybody and want to jump off the bridge. <laughs> Why does everybody laugh? Because I know what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah. It's a snowball effect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, you already say, oh, I already know what kind of day this is going to be. Yeah. Right? Already predetermining how it's going to turn out. Right? Instead of saying, hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's a good day. Amen. It's Amen. a good day. I don't care what's going on. I'm saved. Heaven is my home. I ain't perfect. I'm forgiven. I'm doing the best I can to walk up uprightly with the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm alive today. Amen. You know how many of us take life for granted? We all do. The Bible tells us to live each day like it's your last. Imagine. If you ever come across somebody that has something that's terminal, and you'll see how much of a lifestyle change they have. Oh, yeah. They start doing everything, enjoying every moment of their life with their kids, with their food, with their, wherever they are. They're just enjoying it because they know their days are numbered. Yep. But guess what, brothers and sisters? Our days are numbered too. Amen. And there's no guarantee tomorrow is ever going to come. Yeah. Could you say, well, I had a great day today. You know, I just accepted everything. Accepted Jesus where he was working in my life. I enjoyed my job. I enjoyed my drive. I enjoyed my wife. I enjoyed my kids. Even though it ain't all perfect, I enjoyed it because I might not be here tomorrow. Joy in the Lord is a... Uh, that's having all your armor on. Understanding the frailty of life. You can't understand the frailty of life by going to college. No. Nope, it ain't going to happen. No Matter of fact, that makes you want to gain more and more in this world. Yep. I want to better myself. I'm going to be better, 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 better. Instead of saying, all right, Lord, I, I love where you have me, Lord. I, I want you to, you know, wherever you want me, I'm here. If you don't want me to have it, Lord, I don't want it. Amen. <clears throat> How do you know if you don't want you to have it? Because you keep praying and praying and praying and you don't get it. <laughs> so you just accept it. I ain't getting it. And guess what? Usually when that happens, when you can accept it, then you use it better. Mm -hmm. When you could live, when you could do with it or without it, then whatever. And then what? God blesses you. First thing Solomon prayed for was what? He says, Lord, I'm young. Give me the wisdom mm -hmm. so I could be a, you know, the king of your nation. Right prayer. 
Because he didn't know much. He humbled himself. God gave him all the knowledge and the wisdom he ever needed. And he added on top of that all the riches too. Because he was, it had the right heart. The right state of mind. He was asking for things lining up with God's will for him. Are we getting this? Yes. Because it produces something in us. God's he's more interested in changing what you desire than giving you what you desire. He starts to change our desires. I don't desire that anymore, Lord. I know it's not good for me. I had enough of that. Please don't give me any more of that suffering. We getting it? Where else? Where else can we go in Scripture? Go to Romans 6. Talk about this righteousness. Does God want us to live right to get saved? Does living right have anything to do with you getting saved? No. No. Does living right have anything to do after you are saved? Yes. Has everything to do with it. Everything. Yes. The fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life. My character is gone. John and John is showing up less and less when he goes out. This is, I try to tell you this. John has to stay home or he has to go in the ground. Something. Because mm -hmm. I know nothing good lives in me in my sinful nature. Mm -hmm. So what's my sinful nature? This flesh. Yeah. Nothing good in there. There's a motive behind everything I do even though I'm acting so nice and people say, oh, he's such a good person. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm doing it for the wrong reason. There's something behind it that I'm trying to get. You don't know it. I do. When you go out for the right reason, it doesn't matter if anybody waves, if somebody cusses, you do something nice for somebody because it's the right thing to do not to get rewarded for it. Amen. Right. And then when somebody treats you bad, you pray for them. Amen. Right. Well, no, I'm a Christian. I should stand up for myself. <laughs> No, you're an alien here, is what you are. That's why you're not getting the right treatment. If you're a Christian, it will never line up right here. Never. Right. But in a devil's system. Right. Once you intermix with the devil's system and start getting comfortable in this system, that's when you go into compromise. Yep. Mm. There's times I come home and I like shut the door and say, oh, whew, glad I made it home. <laughs> No, there was times in my life when I couldn't wait to get out the door. See, there's a difference. Now I can't wait to get in my sanctuary. Yep. Before, I couldn't wait to go out. Yep. There's a difference in itself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? If you think about that, right? Yeah. You walk in the door sometimes, whew, man, it's getting crazy out there. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. So I go in, go in the house. And it's crazy it is sometimes, too. Then I say, you know what? I have to go to Jesus. Because sometimes there's no peace anywhere here. The only peace is to look up. Amen. All right, Lord. My enemies are surrounding me. How can I still have peace? Trust me. Because I put you in that. And I'm going to take you out of it. If you trust me. If you don't react your way, you'll get it. That's some armor, isn't it? Yes. Look at Romans 6, verse um, 17. Oh, no, let's back up a little bit. Look at verse 15. Well, then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey? You mean I can be a Christian and obey Satan? Yes. It says it right here. You become a slave to whatever you choose to obey. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God. Wait a minute. Obeying God, what does it do? It leads to what? Righteous living. Oh, so when I'm obeying God and doing His will, it leads me to what? A righteous lifestyle. Amen. Living right and doing the right thing. Yep. Look, thank God 
Once you were slaves of sin, before Christ, you were a slave to sin. Had no, had no power against it to overcome it. Now look what it says. Now you wholeheartedly, here's one of the big things that Christians don't get, wholeheartedly. <coughs> you come into this half-heartedly, and it will never work. Look what it says. Thank God. You were slaves and die. You wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. You mean I become a slave? I used to be a slave and I always used to do the wrong thing? Now I have to be a slave to do the right thing even when my flesh wants to do the wrong thing. Amen. That's a beautiful thing right there. Amen. I want to do wrong and I want to get back with them, at them and I ain't gonna. Amen. Because why? Because God told me I don't have to and I want to glorify Him today. Amen. Amen. There's a mature Christian that understands God's will it causes me to live a different lifestyle. Totally different lifestyle. The Apostle Paul was living a totally... He thought he was doing the right thing for God. He thought he was doing the right thing by what? Following the law and killing Christians. And he thought he was doing God a favor. What did God do? Knocked him off his high horse, turned him around, and he was so different, it changed his name. Saul was now preaching God's word. And he says, now I'm going to show you what it costs to suffer for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. And he went to prison, he got whipped, and he got beaten. But he never went back to the old man again. Right. He was transformed. He was a different person. People were even saying, yeah, that's the guy that was persecuting us. Now he's the one teaching us about Jesus. Amen. Don't tell me the transformation don't come. Amen. It comes. Amen. Look what it says. Go to, all right, go to, go to 1 John. How do I know all these things? Well, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about it. So that's why righteousness. So what I'm trying to tell you, if you're not living right, guess what? The armor, the breastplate of righteousness is what? You're not putting it on. So now you've got a big hole right here. And what does that protect? What does the breastplate protect? Your heart. Your vital organs. Living a dirty, sinful life is like, oh, I know all God. I got the helmet of salvation on, but I left the breastplate of righteousness at home. Because God gave me his righteousness so I can be righteous. So I left that home. So guess who I'm living like? I'm living for myself again, not for Jesus. Armor off. So does righteousness play a big part? And you putting on your armor? Yes, of course it does. And most Christians won't even follow that part of it. So I'm leaving my breastplate home. My heart is wide open for attack. Because I'm not doing the right thing. So you want that breastplate on? You want to take that with you? Guess what? Do the right thing. And you're going out with it on. Do the wrong thing, it's like taking it off. Because you know what the right thing is because God taught you what the right thing is. First John, look at the uh, chapter 2. Now why would this be in here? Look at verse... Verse 29. Oh, go to verse 28. 1 John chapter 2. Verse 28. As a matter of fact, go to 26. This is even more really better. <laughs> the Spirit speaks to me. That this does. Because then I read it. Yeah, look at it says. Look what he's writing. I'm writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. You mean there's actually people in Christianity that want to lead me astray? Yes, yes they are. <laughs> there's people in church that lead you astray from living a righteous life because they're not living a righteous life so they think you're a legalist. Mm -hmm. Living right has nothing to do, legalism is not anything to do, living right is not legalism. Mm -hmm. no. It's a lie from Satan. Living right is what? The power of God manifests. His supernatural power working in our flesh. Letting us walk in the spirit even though we're still in the flesh. 
Amen? Amen. That's Amen. supernatural. Look, you can't do it in the natural. No. I hope uh, my glasses are tap out. I hope you finally go like this when you wake up. I tap out. I can't do it. Yeah. Now I'm going to let God do it. Now look what it says. But you have received the Holy Spirit, and He lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. Look, you already know it as well as I do. God did not save you to live a devilish, unrighteous life. Okay, you already know that. He saved you so you could live a good, godly life here. You already know that, and you can't deny it. He didn't save you for any other reason. People like to ignore these parts of Scripture because... It eases my conscience. Not my righteousness. It's God's righteousness. Hmm. Yeah, you're very. It's very true. But He put His righteousness in you, <laughs> and you, and He wants you to be like Jesus. So, how can you live unrighteously and be like Jesus? Tell me. Yeah. Can you? No. <laughs> Man, you know that song. I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Well, do you? Yeah. Do you really? Okay. That's a nice challenge right there, isn't it? Yes. He's going to say, okay, I want to show you what it's going to take for you to be like Jesus. Yep. Oh. <laughs> 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 then he's going to show you what's not of God and what is of God. Okay? Can you tell me that living an unrighteous life is of God after you get saved? Can you? Can you honestly come up here and tell me that living any way I want is God's will for my life? <clears throat> so why do you think it's all right for you to do it if you already know that God, that's not why God saved you? He saved you to glorify Him. <clears throat> oh, but I'm going to heaven. Yeah, but you're living in hell. Because you know the conflict. You're trying to justify doing the wrong thing when God called you to do the right thing. And he put his spirit in you. So you have a conflict going on while you're here and you become miserable. You can't get unsaved. That's a beautiful thing, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. You can't get unsaved. Amen. To the point where you'll be, well, to the point where you're so miserable, a saved, miserable person, because you're trying to like unlearn what you already know. See, once the truth of God's word hits you, you can't not, not have it anymore. That's right. So you live unrighteously, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. So you're better off jumping back on the boat and saying, hey, I don't want. I already know what the truth is, man. I'm going to stay over here. This is a lot better. Amen. Because I know what the consequences of my actions will be. Now look what it says now. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know, and what He teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as He has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. Fellowship with Christ. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ, so that when He returns, you will be well, full of courage and not shrink back from Him in shame. What would make you shrink back from Him in shame? When he comes back, 